Now, one of the problems I think we have as Christians is getting our heads around the teaching of the Bible. Now, we read the Bible, and hopefully we read it regularly. We study it at church as well. And we often know the individual details of stories and incidents in the Bible. But I think where we struggle is in trying to make sense of the Bible as a whole. Because the Bible is a big book, isn't it? It's got a lot of content. So to be able to understand all of it is a little bit difficult at times. I hope that our series of sermons on the topic of the law and the heart is going to help you to understand something of the bigger picture of the Bible. Because the concept of the law and the heart is a powerful idea that helps us understand what is it that God is doing in relation to us and in relation to people of Israel and the human race as a whole. Now my thinking on this concept actually goes back a fair way. There's me back in 2002. It was taken in Burwood. And the reason they took that photo was because I was starting up my work as a lecturer at a college. So some of you probably know that. That before I started working here, which was 2011, my main work was lecturing in various Bible colleges in Sydney. And so that work for me started back then in 2002. And I was given the job of teaching the Old Testament prophets and also Hebrew, which is the original language of the Old Testament. And a couple of years later, in 2004, I was also given the opportunity to teach on the book of Romans, which is in the New Testament. And as I started doing that, I realised that you can't fully understand the teaching of the Apostle Paul and the New Testament without really seeing the connections back into the message of the Old Testament prophets. Because the Old Testament prophets, when they were ministering, they were looking forward to what God was going to do in the future during the New Covenant Age. And what they have to say about that is very important. And one of the things that they talk about is the law on the heart. Now, for me, back in 2004, this concept of the law on the heart was so important, plus saying, you know, this idea of God writing his law in our hearts, that takes a little bit of time, right? So I thought, okay, what about coming up with a new term, a new term for this idea of God writing his law in people's hearts? So there it is there up on the screen. It's a little bit long, but does anyone want to have a go at reading it? Cardionomography, is that what you said, Steve? He's shaking his head there. Okay, cardionomography, nice word. But what does it mean? Well, let's break it up into its components. What do you reckon? Now, there are three components. Cardio, nomo, and graphy. Now, we actually know at least two of those components from other words. Actually, I think we know all of them. But the more prominent ones that we know are cardio and graphy, right? But cardio, what does cardio mean? Heart? Now, Brendan needs a physio, right? They often talk about cardio when it comes to exercises. Brendan, can you come out the front here? Just give us a, a demo of one exercise that is good for your heart. Yeah, I'm being serious here. Come on, come on. Come on. We want to know what's good for our heart. This is cardio, right? Cardio exercise. He's not looking too energetic here. What's this? <laughs> Star jumps and bowing down. Anyway, yeah, okay, so cardio means heart. Next one, next one is nomo. Now you might be thinking, what does nomo mean? This one's a little bit harder, but we actually use the word, or the word component, in words such as astronomy and economy. Right? There's even a technique in mathematics, which I'm sure we're all aware of, called nomography. What does that mean? Well, it involves the design of graphical calculators. So instead of punching numbers in, you actually have like a diagram here and you can work out what things are on the basis of this graph. Anyway, NOMO, any thoughts as what NOMO means? Astronomy and economy doesn't help you here? No? 
Law? Yeah. You agree, John? Yeah. Why do you agree? Because um, I did some Greek. Yeah. <laughs> okay, nomos, nomos in Greek means law, okay. But what about graphy? Writing. Writing? Okay, too easy. Too easy. We do a fair bit, don't we, of graphy, geography, and all these other things. Well, you can see there the meaning of the three components. So when we put them together, we get heart law writing. In other words, God's work of writing his law on our hearts. Now, I will say that this term, cardionomography, I'm really hoping it has a life, right? Now, recently, thanks to a theological article that I recently got published overseas, it does actually appear on a Google search. So it does have a bit of a life. But the question for me as the creator of this term is, how much of a life is it going to get? Anyway, if you start using it, it'll start growing. I guess time will tell. But I am actually hoping that more people will start using this term over time. Maybe not in everyday usage, right? But at least when they're talking about this concept in the Bible. And I hope this because it is an important concept. It's a concept that occurs in some key Old Testament passages. And this is going to be our focus today. So for starters, let me prove to you that this cardiomnomography is a concept that is present in the Old Testament. The two most important passages were the ones that were just read out for us. These talk about God writing his law on the hearts of his people. So Jeremiah 31, verse 33, and Ezekiel 36, verses 26 and 27. Now before we look at these in detail, we should know something about Jeremiah and Ezekiel. They are what we call exilic prophets. What do you think that means? They've got something to do with exile. Okay, Which exile? What happened to the people of Israel? They were exiled to Babylon. Okay, So basically these guys, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, they function as prophets. During the time when the Jews were transported from their homeland to Babylon. And reflecting on the reasons that the relationship between God and Israel failed, which was what led to the exile, both of these prophets, they speak about cardionomography as the solution to Israel's problem. And the solution that they talked about is also presented in the Bible as being the solution to the problem of humanity as a whole in terms of our relationship with God. So let's consider the passage from... Jeremiah first. Jeremiah 31.33. It occurs within a section that defines the new covenant. In fact, the only time that the phrase new covenant is used in the Old Testament occurs in this passage, in Jeremiah 31. In verse 31. Now, as the Jews were being attacked by the Babylonians and dragged off into exile, God promised them that one day he would restore the fortunes of his people Israel. And according to Jeremiah 31.33, this restoration of Israel would be connected in with a cardionomographic work on God's part. At a certain point of time in the future, God was going to put his law within the people of Israel and write it upon their hearts. So we can see here this verse, Jeremiah 31, 33, it clearly speaks of cardionomography. In the future, God was going to inscribe his law, not on tablets of stone, but on the hearts of his people. But what about the passage in Ezekiel 36? Now this one is interesting because it doesn't just talk about cardionomography, but it links this idea in with the work of God's Holy Spirit. So let's take a look at this one. In the context of God promising that he's going to restore Israel and bless them, God promises Israel, he says, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And my spirit I will put within you. And I will cause you to walk in my decrees and to keep my judgments and do them. Now friends, these verses explain 
how it would be that God would write his law on the hearts of his people. God would do this by sending forth his spirit to change the stony hearts of disobedient Israel so that they might have hearts of flesh. We have here a description of the fact that in the future God's spirit is going to bring about a heart transformation for the people of Israel. Their hard and unreceptive stony hearts are going to be transformed into soft and receptive fleshy hearts. In other words, God is promising to the people of Israel that the problem of their disobedience to him is one day going to be overcome through the Holy Spirit giving them hearts that are going to be receptive to God's word. And the effect of this heart transformation will be profound. With their stony hearts replaced by fleshy hearts, Israel will finally be enabled to obey God's law and to receive the blessings promised by God in passages such as the Vigas 26, Deuteronomy 28, to those of his people who are committed to living out God's law in the context of grace, in the required covenantal sense. The prophecy of Ezekiel in Ezekiel 36 there, it also echoes some words that we see elsewhere in the book of Ezekiel. In Ezekiel 11, verses 19 and 20. And there we see God speaking through the prophet Ezekiel and saying, I will give them one heart and a new spirit I will put within them. And I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and I will give them a heart of flesh in order that they might walk in my decrees and keep my judgments and do them. You can see there this passage in Ezekiel 11, very similar to the one in Ezekiel 36. This heart transformation affected by God through his spirit is going to bring Israel back to God. It's going to enable Israel to obey God's law and to keep God's covenant. So, there it is. Some proof to you from the Old Testament that cardionomography is a concept that exists. Jeremiah 31, 33 links the work of God writing his law on the hearts of his people in with the new covenant. In fact, this cardionomographic work of God is a key component of what the new covenant is all about. And Ezekiel 36 verses 26 and 27, they link the cardionomographic work of God in with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to be the agent of that work. So here we see this heart transformation in the people of Israel. It's going to be something which God is going to bring about in the future. And this is very important. And there are other ways that the Old Testament talks about this idea as well. We have in Jeremy 30, verse 6, it says, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring, so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, in order that you might live. That verse there talks about heart circumcision. It's basically synonymous with this idea of the law being written on the hearts of God's people. And there are also some other passages in the Bible that talk about this concept as well. God's people are supposed to have God's word in their hearts. Deuteronomy 6.6, for example, Moses there, he speaks about the necessity of having God's law within our hearts. When teaching the people God's law, Moses says to them, these words which I am commanding you today should be upon your heart. Deuteronomy 11.18 And you shall place these words of mine on your heart and in your soul. Likewise, Deuteronomy 32.46 Moses says, Set your heart on all the words that I am testifying against you today. We also get some language which is similar to this in Job 22.22. We get Eliphaz instructing Job and he says, Receive instruction from God's mouth and place his words in your heart. And finally, another indirect reference to this idea in Proverbs 3.3. 3. Solomon calls upon his son to write kindness and truth on the tablet of your heart, where the words kindness and truth, they parallel 
the words law and commandments, which are mentioned in Proverbs 3.1. So hopefully you can see there, this is an idea which occurs in the Old Testament. But we also need to think a little bit about the importance of this idea. Because what does it mean to have God's law on your heart? Well, basically, the idea is that you have the revelation that God gives us impacting upon your psyche. In biblical thinking, the heart is like the integrating centre of the human person. So if you have God's law in your heart, basically that's meaning that God's word is now affecting how you think and feel. It's affecting how you live. It's like the content of your brain is now being directed by God's revelation. So it's an important idea. In Psalm 119 verse 11, the author says in prayer to God, he says, I've stored up your word in my heart in order that I might not sin against you. You see what he says there? If we have God's word in our heart, it's going to be leading us in the right direction. We're no longer going to be disobedient to God. Having God's word in our heart is necessary in order for us to be able to respond obediently to God. And that's why this idea is very significant. Basically here we need to understand that God's revelation, it comes to us from outside, right? How did Israel know God's word? How did it get to them? Who was the key person there, starting off? Remember they're there before Mount Sinai? God comes down on the mountain. God delivers his law to the people of Israel directly. He only did that for the Ten Commandments, right? But for everything else, he delivered it to Moses. But even when they heard God's voice directly, it's still coming to them from outside. God's revelation, it starts with God. He's not us. He's outside of us. But what he says then needs to be internalised within us. Okay, His law, his word needs to be written on our hearts. It needs to impact our brains. And we get this law of Moses originally. The externality of it symbolised through the tablets of stone. Right? Ten Commandments. There they are written on the tablets of stone. But that external law was subsequently meant to be internalised in the hearts of the people through covenant instruction and through covenant meditation. Okay, Israel needed to be taught God's word, a little bit like us today. But being taught God's word, they also needed to think about it to make sure it becomes internalised. So with God's word internalised or written upon their hearts, The faithful obedience that God required of Israel under the stipulations of the covenant, well, that would be realised. All right, so we can see here no cardiomography, no obedience. In addition, there's another element to the importance of this idea, and that is the Old Testament also signals that the presence or absence of God's word in the hearts of his people determines the future of their relationship together. The destiny of the people of Israel depended upon cardionomography. It depended upon the extent to which God's external revelation had become internalised within their hearts. And as far as Moses and the Old Testament prophets were concerned, the future well-being of the nation of Israel was dependent upon how well that process took place. And by the way, what the Old Testament prophets say about Israel also applies to us through the New Covenant as well. For Israel to be successful, in order for the blessings of the covenant to flow, they needed to be living out God's word. They needed to have God's word in their hearts. As the law became written on the hearts of individuals and the nation as a whole, God's law would be obeyed, the covenant kept, and the promised blessing of life would be experienced by Israel as a result. So friends, do you see how it works? Basically all we're saying here is the message of Genesis 1. What happened back in the beginning? 
to bring about life. Well, we can say God created life, but what are we told in Genesis 1? How did God bring about life? What did he do? He spoke. God's word gives life. For life to be a reality, God's word needs to be a part of our lives. For life to be experienced on this planet, God's word needs to be internalised in human hearts. So the Old Testament prophets present the reality of cardiomography as being central to the survival, not only of Israel and the promised land, but it's central to life in this universe. If we want the fullness of the blessings of the age to come, to be realised, well, it's connected in with this idea of God's word being on people's hearts. Without God's word, there cannot be life. So, we can actually say here that cardionomography is the key to life. Ignore God's word, we die. But if God's word is in our hearts, we live.